Stick around. 133693 if you'd like to call the program. David M. Green joins me after the news. We'll be talking about video with my guest David M. Green, a curator of um, otherwise forgettable moments committed to VHS. He knows them all. He knows where the... uh, the advertising bodies are buried. It's going to be a very interesting chat, and I'm really looking forward to it. Right now, a fine comedian and writer joins me, David M. Green. Here, not in your signature tuxedo, I might point out, David. No, it's uh, far too hot for that. Hello, Tony. Um, now, uh, we bumped into each other. We've, we've worked together before, and I've always admired your channel on YouTube because it takes a lot of digging around. It takes... I don't know how you do it, but you... You managed to find gems that we thought, maybe hoped, had been forgotten and buried. But your YouTube does what? Your channel does what? Well, uh, I, I look through old VHS tapes, videotapes. It's what we used to use to record TV back yeah. before there was the internet. And, you know, that was the only way. If you missed a show and you wanted to uh, watch it, you could set your VCR to record it and then come back and watch it later. So there's millions of these things lying around in landfill and on the street and in people's garages and stuff. So I, I look through them, uh, and if there's anything interesting, I'll uh, put it together in a little highlight reel and uh, do some jokes in between, and that's, uh, that's VHS Review. Where do you get your tapes from? Some of them are mine yeah. from, from when I was a teenager, uh, like late 90s. 2000s. Um, some I, I do literally find in the trash. <laughs> uh, one of my uh, neighbours recently, he, he heard that I was interested in tapes. He said, I've got 500 tapes in my garage. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm Mary Condoing. Uh, do you want them? And I'm like, yeah, all right. So it's all Melbourne TV recorded in the 80s and 90s. 500 of them. So I've, they're in my garage now. There's like eight very large plastic boxes. It's literally going to take decades to go through them at the rate that I'm going through them. But I'm going to go through every single one. If there's any, anything interesting or funny, any old ads or strange shows, uh, I'll put them together in, in the show. You have a very forgiving better half. I would not get that past my wife. I have 500 video cassettes. I, uh, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, so, well, it's going to be a problem when we uh, renovate the garage because <laughs> I don't know where they're going to go then. Um, but you're doing important work. If you had to sum up the difference between TV now, it's an industry you've definitely been involved in as, as a writer. If Looking back, because they are time capsules of a sort, these VC, VHS tapes, what, what do you notice? What sticks out? Oh, there, were, there were a lot more, lot more short game shows on TV back yeah. in the nineties. You know, like uh, there used to be Family Feud, uh, Sale of the Century, and there's a lot of lots of kids shows as well, kids game shows like uh, Now You See It and Blockbusters. You know, yeah. there used to be lots of those little little half hour shows. These days, uh, if it is a show like that, a game show it tends to be an hour. Or with Gladiators when they brought that back, it was it was ninety minutes and it was on three times. It was originally going to be on three nights a week. And then when no one watched it, they put it on six nights a week. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> Dial it back. That's doubling down. Who would have been your favourite gladiator, gladiator from that time? Who would you... Uh, of the original. Yeah. Uh, Vulcan. Well, thank you. Who, had to I be mean, Vulcan. Yes. Had to be, exactly. Now, um, I had a look at your channel, and we came across an ad for fast food. And there is... I'm not going to say it's editorialising in this ad, but there is a word that you would not expect to hear... In an ad for fast food. David M. Green, I'm going to play it to you now. However good your day is, there's one moment that's the best. The one that makes a good day great. When everyone says yes, yes. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Eleven secret herbs and spices make this tender golden crust a sort of super seasoning. It's nice to see them eating well. Everyone says yes, yes. It's so nice, nice to be. It's nice to see them eating well. Yeah, good luck trying to get that on now. I think that was that was 1981. That uh, KFC ad is from, and it's you know it's a fresh faced Aussie family. All the kids are blonde. Everyone's blonde. They're uh, they're, at, they're at the beach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's idyllic. One double three six nine three. If you just want to harken back, if you want to remind us of an ad from days of yore that we might have forgotten, or a TV show, because you've got something for us, haven't you, David? I do. Are we going to we going to play that now? Well, Let's, you you set it up, well, and we'll see play if, it. See, see, dear listener, see if you remember uh, this show. See if you can guess what it's uh, what it's for. If you're missing out on that little bit extra, come and get a little bit more. 
Um, was what that, the hell was that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> was that Glenn Ridge stimulating people or was it Tony Barber stimulating people? No, that was the, the, towards the dying years of the Tony Barber era. It's from, yeah. it's from 1989, uh, Sale of the Century. It is the weirdest promo I think I've ever seen. You've got to see the visuals. I mean, it, the audio is weird, but it, they've got a full studio with dancers and uh, strange characters and it's all choreographed. It's absolutely bizarre. It's got nothing to do with Sale of the Century, the game show. I think Tony, uh, Tony Barber just wanted to sing and dance. Did it have anything to do with him leaving the program shortly after that? Uh, well, yeah, he only lasted maybe another season and then uh, was replaced by Glenn Ridge. He, I think from memory, he, well, he decided to leave it. He was king of that show and he was, he was king of Melbourne. He was absolutely huge. Yeah. Um, that show, when you look back at it now, Sale of the Century, what strikes you? I, I, well, the physical prizes, I think. That's something yeah. you don't see anymore. All the game shows now, they all have cash prizes. And the reason for that is it's just a lot easier to organize. Yeah. If you have uh, golf clubs and a dining room setting and all of that, someone has to liaise with those companies. They have to physically transport yeah. all that stuff to the studio, set it up, have models draped over it. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a pain, so it's a lot easier now just to have money. Well, I noticed um, if that was brought back, there was a, there was a gift shop there. Um, and I, if we were to do it today, I guess you'd have it being firebombed by a crime family um, on, the, <laughs> on the suspicion it was selling illegal cigarettes. One double three six nine three. If there's an ad that you remember, an old ad or an old bit of TV, because you are you were doing important work. I'm going to say, David. Thanks. Well, you know, I'm really just doing it for the the gags. There are real archivists out there who just upload tapes and tapes and thousands of blocks of commercials and stuff, but I, I'm just really looking for the ones I can make fun of. All right. And we find your YouTube channel how? Uh, it's VHS Review, R-E-V-U-E. There we go. Uh, or uh, just search my name somewhere on uh, social media. I'm on all of them. You, you can't miss it. Stick around because we're going to take calls. Dean, good afternoon. Hey, Tony. Um, ad and a TV show. Um, a beer, beer ads were fantastic, sort of back in the 80s and the 70s, but I remember an ad campaign for Melbourne Bitter in the 80s. Um, yeah. And you could only see it if you were in the country. You had to be in the country because Melbourne Bitter was the beer that everybody drank in the country, ironically, back in the day. And there was a country group called the Hawking Brothers. I don't know if that rings a bell. Um, they were a big country music band and um, they would just do this storytelling. They would write these 60-second storytelling songs that were about you know country life and you know, going home on the weekend um, and, and drinking Melbourne Bitter. They'd normally run in the penthouse club uh, on a Saturday night with Mary Hardy and, yeah. and, and Mike Williamson. Um, but that, that, that was just brilliant of, of that time in, in terms of nostalgia, great storytelling beer ads. Um, but the, the show at Melbourne School that I used to love, there were two shows I used to love running home to watch. Yeah. Um, Simon Towns' Wonder World oh, was great because it, there was a reporter called Edith Bliss. There was a reporter called Edith Bliss, there Edith Bliss on that you. show. That was just, uh, yeah, there you go. And Shirley's Neighbourhood was so bloody funny where Shirley Strawn and Norm the Kangaroo and Claude the Crow, um, but they were naughty. They would crack so many naughty jokes yes. in, in basically kids' you know, yeah. <laughs> kids' time. It was, it was just, just a joy to watch. Uh, well, they weren't the only... Get a, they, they could get away with. They weren't the only show, Dean, and I'll tell you this, David, I remember seeing it years ago. I may have even been in black and white on Play School when they had a male, uh, a male host and a female host. And they had the, the female host, David, with her arms in a, in a pyramid above her arm and she was playing a house. Right. And the male host said, and, uh, and here in the house are two windows, and he pointed at the eyes, and, uh, and here's the roof. And he said, this house even comes with some knockers on the door. <laughs> Play school. Oh, I can't do that anymore. Disappointing play school. We both condemn you, David M. Green and I. Um, tell us about your favourite ad in days of your days gone by. If there's an ad that uh, you want to get nostalgic about, David Green is here. And he does this on a YouTube channel where he just uh, digs up remarkable bits of 30, 40 year old TV. Yeah. Oh, uh, even some of it's not that old. Some of the, you know, people were still using VHS tapes into the early 2010s. Uh, so I've, I think the most recent one I found is maybe 2011, 
And you wouldn't think that that would have much interesting stuff on it, but uh, times do change quicker than you think. There's a... there's a there's a promo for I think CSI and Justin Bieber is a guest star and he's like arrested for drunk driving and we're like that actually really happened in real life. <laughs> like he wouldn't have been later. able to see over the dash at yeah. that age. I don't think he barely Crikey. had his license. David, stick around. Back with your calls in the moment. One double three six nine three. Appropriate music. David M Green, who runs a great channel on YouTube. How would you describe it? Uh, the YouTube? Yeah, no, no, your it's a channel. video serving. Oh, oh, thank you. All right, let Sharing. me make a note of that. Okay. I'll write them a letter. Can I get a subscription? Oh, good luck trying to speak to anyone from YouTube. They've made it impossible. Uh, they, they just send you in circles through the, you know, customer service stuff. They have so much power, yeah. don't they? For you, you, as far as a content creator goes. So you've got um, hundreds, maybe thousands of VHSs, and you you scroll through them. You get great bits of vintage vision. Yep. And you comment on them. Yep. So uh, yeah, a lot of lot of commercials. Uh, you know, some some shows, but most ironically, you know, the actual programs on these tapes are the, the least interesting thing. It's the ads <laughs> that, uh, that you know is where the gold is. Well, that's what we're talking about. One double three six nine three. Lee, have you got an ad of old that uh, sticks in your head? I don't know how old it is, but and I can't even think what it was about. But the, this kid used to ask his dad questions. It was a series of ads, and one of them that stuck in my mind. The kid says, uh, "Why did they build the Great Wall?" And and the, and the father says, "Oh, Emperor Nazi Goring uh, to keep the rabbits out." Yeah, you know that one. I, I, that is just one of the best ads in Australian history. Do you remember what it's for? I do. Now, this is the thing, Lee. A lot of smart people put that ad together in the hope that you would remember who it was for. And I don't. <laughs> David, please tell us. I think it was Telstra. Telstra. Yeah. yeah. Or NBN. Just like, there we yeah, go. Thank you. And the, the gorgeous part at the end where the little kid stands in front of the class about to tell them where the Great Wall of China comes from. Yeah. Uh, Lee, great memory. Thank you. James, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, Tony. Um, my mum was in one of those Melbourne Bitter ads, and I'll sing you the song if you want. I think they were filmed in Albury in late 79, 80, and the, the ditty goes like this. I'm just a country boy, that's fine. Dun, dun, dun. Ain't got much, but what I've got is mine. Dun, dun, dun. Fresh air comes for nothing. The good life comes for free. I'm just a country boy, that's me. And when the evening comes along, I like to sing a country song and drink a Melbourne bitter as the settling sun goes on. Melbourne bitter sure tastes good, tastes the way a good beer should, and I reckon nothing's better dun, 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 than a country boy should know. James, you have earned every bit of that pre-recorded applause. That was brilliantly it done. Uh, it was uh, it was filmed up in Albury on a on a big old red house, and they were sitting around the porch, all uh, sucking on the lagers. And uh, yeah, I remember it very well. Good on you. No, your mum was a part of it. You will no doubt. Well, I need to ask you, David. Will you come across that? How much regional TV do you have on your tapes? Well, I haven't come across that one yet, but uh, yeah, I have looked at some regional tapes that were recorded uh, like on Win TV, or yeah. there was one from uh, Broken Hill on a station called Central Television, GTS BKN. Yeah, some of that stuff's great because it's really, really local stuff. You know, oh. local businesses, very low budgets. Uh, yeah, most of it's pretty dull, but occasionally you get someone who uh, tries to do something a bit too ambitious. <laughs> I, I saw someone else posted a video from like a car yard from Mount Gambia, mm. and they've got like a stunt driver driving the car up on the two side wheels, like through the, the yard. I'm not buying a car that's from bizarre. them if no. that's how they treat them. No, yeah, the wheels would be all damaged on the sides. Thank you. That's wheel balancing gone crazily <laughs> wrong. Um, James, thank you. Hello, David. Uh, one that springs to mind. Not happy, Jan. Again, pound for pound, as brilliant. Not happy, Jan. As brilliant as it gets. <laughs> yep, that's. Uh, I think the best ads, in my opinion, were either for alcohol or for the yellow pages. They just yeah. made. They just made the best ads. Like say what you want about Telstra, they hired a really good advertising agency occasionally. Yeah, great work. Good on you, David. Hello, Steve. 
Hey, Tony, David. Remember when um, John Elliott tried to fosterise the world in nineteen so late seventies? He did a good job and of it. Know, you remember the jingle? I do. It was. It went. Is it all right to sing it? Yeah, please do. Yeah, Foster's Lager, Foster's Lager, and a bottle, bottle, can or glass. It's the health food of the nation. Stick your eyes. There, cream up there we go. Cream. There, it's something along those lines. I don't know if Big Jack would have signed off on that. Uh, I've heard another uh, Foster's jingle. <laughs> yeah, I think they changed that from that to uh, something else at some point in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> With a bit more success. Thank you, Steve. Hello, Robert. Hi, Tony. Great show. Look, this this one came out late uh, late 80s. It was for Uncle Toby's. It's no how you make porridge. And it was a Scottish, a real dorky-looking kid. And I've got that on tape. I've got some old tapes too. That is the best ad. Do you know that one, David? I don't. I don't think so. But I feel like that would have been the thing that fa- uh, Fast Forward would have parodied, maybe with Magna Zabansky doing an accent. I can sort of feel that. <laughs> well, her, in my brain. her mother was Scottish. She does a she bang on guess, Scottish yeah. accent. Yeah. Um, Robert, I remember those ads, and you're right; they were irritating because the kid involved wasn't Scottish. But it's the classic appeal to expertise. Yes, that one. And just because you've they, got a Scottish they know accent, porridge, right? yeah, well, no, they don't. I mean, imagine the pressure you're under as a Scotsman to be able to be chapter and verse on oats. That's not how you make porridge. <sighs> Julie, good afternoon. Uh, hi. The one that comes to my mind is a little boy sitting on the back step, and the crocodile bit me. Arm went one way, leg went the other way. It was for HBA. Oh, we what? don't have audio of that, but do you know that one, David? Because that is one of the greatest ads of all. He was an absolutely I, gorgeous kid. I think. Yeah. I, I think in Adelaide, I grew up in Adelaide. I reckon that was for Mutual Community, wasn't it? Was it? It probably was because. Do you remember the campaign, Julie? Yes, I thought it was for HBA. It was HBA. Yeah. We're going to play the audio, and I'll tell you what the what the guess uh, the mechanic was, or whatever it is. But let's have a listen to it. Crocodile came up, got my guts out, and even bit me into parts, pieces, and even my legs went that way, and even my head went that way. So the, the tagline in that was, life is unpredictable. That's right. So What a performance. Oh, he, he absolutely nailed it, and was unbearable to work with after that. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, he really went too to early. Head. So thank you. Um, thank you, David. Thank you. We're Thank going you to, so much. To, uh, just, you've brought the memories, and we appreciate that. Um, give us your channel, please. Uh, so VHS Review is the name of the show, uh, R-E-V-U-E. Uh, but if you type it the other way, it'll probably come up. If you put it into YouTube, uh, on social media, TikTok, Instagram. Great way to yeah. while away the hours. Thank you, and keep up the good work. Right. Cheers, Tony. Really appreciate it. David M. Green, everybody.